Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest release coming from the CMU emulator team, version 120.0. Since our previous release version was 119.4, this 20 version revision means that this is going to be a major features update and in my testing so far, it indeed does seem to be the case with much better gameplay, much better performance, and indeed, far fewer graphical bugs than we previously had on the emulator. Now, if you are not a CMU Patreon supporter, this new version is going to be available to you on the coming Friday, July the 17th. All you have to do is turn on your auto-updater, and as soon as it's released to everyone in the public, it'll automatically download and install itself on your system. That is, of course, if you've already followed previous guides of mine and enabled this setting. Now, a quick word of warning for any CMU patron supporters, if you've already downloaded 120.0, there was a 120.0b version update, so if you haven't already downloaded this, please do check your email or the CMU Patreon page since after a few days of user testing, they released a hotfix version titled 120.0b. This solved a lot of performance and graphical issues in many games, so please make sure to download and utilize this B variant. Now, as I said, we do get better performance in a lot of games on this new version, and I'm going to be taking a look at those in just a few minutes. But for now, we're going to be taking a look at everything changing in this new 20.0 version. To start things off, we're going to take a look at the biggest change in this new numbered release, a brand new and complete rewrite of the GPU buffer cache. CMU's developers have given us some technical details on exactly what they have changed and exactly what the GPU buffer cache does. Let's quickly go over these remarks given to us by the devs. CMU's buffer cache exists to emulate unified memory PCs generally have a dedicated VRAM unlike the original console which shares its RAM between its CPU and GPU. The emulator's old buffer cache implementation had separate caches for different types of GPU buffers, be it attribute, uniform, or streamout, while the new buffer cache implementation has one central cache for all buffer types, avoiding redundancy if any data is overlapped. What this means for the user is that you're going to have much lower PCIe bandwidth usage since only actually modified data is going to be transferred. And on top of this, it is a very, very high accuracy with almost no CPU overhead since this new buffer cache relies on hints, for example, cache flushes instead of the old method of using polling with heuristics. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at what this change implements, Let's take a look at how it's going to affect the user. Again, we've been given some improvements that have been found by users in testing over the past few days, and also some notes given to us again by the CMU developers. The known improvements as of 120.0b are the following. Better performance in many games, we're going to be taking a look at this in Breath of the Wild using OpenGL and Vulkan in just a few moments. The GPU buffer cache accuracy option has now been removed from both global and game profile lists. This makes getting your game's optimal settings much, much more user friendly since every game is just going to use this singular unified GPU buffer cache. Some games of note where we've seen improvements are Sonic Boom where all polygonical explosions are now completely fixed. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze Level 2-1 should no longer have distorted backgrounds and vertex exploding, though it has been noted that this area is still prone to random crashing, and further to these changes, broken particles in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild are now completely fixed. I also want to note that all of these aforementioned changes apply both to OpenGL and Vulkan, so it's not just NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel GPU users that are going to benefit from these upgrades. Every single GPU vendor is going to get a much, much better experience on CMU 120.0. On top of these changes to OpenGL, Vulkan, and the GPU buffer cache, we've also gotten a few general changes to improve quality of life when using CMU emulator itself. They added the option to quick import and export saves from within the title manager. To do this, all you need to do is highlight the save for your specific game, then click import and export in the very bottom part of the window. The quick start guide is now going to automatically fill the MLC folder. This is the custom MLC folder. If it is already known from a previous CMU installation, 
And finally, thanks to the implementation of a texture format D32 Float S8, many black screen issues in Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge have now also been fixed. Okay, so as I promised at the beginning of this video, I'm now going to be taking a look at the performance difference between 119.4 and 120.0, then I'm also going to be taking a look at the performance difference between OpenGL and Vulkan running on the latest version 120. As per usual, I'm going to be using the exact same benchmarking areas and routes that I do for all of these performance benchmarks. First of all, we're going to take a look at the Great Plateau, where already you can see 120.0 is getting between 4 to 7 or 8 frames per second more in this one of the most demanding areas in gameplay. Now, I know I've said this a million times in benchmark videos before, but the reason I use Breath of the Wild for benchmarking performance between versions is one, it's one of the most linear games that you can actually test performance on, it's one of the only games that allows you to completely unlock its frame rate and test performance like this, and on top of this, it has some of the most repeatable scenarios when moving from area to area, especially so when you're using the same save game. One thing I want to note about 120.0 is that on top of it running better performance-wise, it also seems very, very much so smoother than any version previous to it. Now, many of you, if you've played this or any other game in the past, may have noticed that on OpenGL at least, you get small little stutters even if you do have a complete shader cache. These, for the most part, have been completely fixed, or so it seems, in this brand new 1.20 version. Again, moving over to our Hateno Village benchmark, the performance difference, at least at first, didn't seem too apparent. However, after I had everything recorded and I lined them up side by side, the difference was actually quite significant, being between 5 to 8 frames per second. Again, a similar performance difference to what we were seeing on the Great Plateau. Again, similar to that area, in Hateno, the game also seemed to be much, much smoother. Though you may not be able to see it in video, the differences when the game isn't doing small pauses and hiccups is very apparent. The final test we're going to be carrying out for this 120 version is to compare OpenGL to Vulkan, and again, as you can see by the benchmark numbers on the top of our screen, Vulkan has seemingly gotten a very, very nice performance improvement in this version also. Now, as many of you know, for these kind of performance tests, especially so on OpenGL, I always use the setting Full Sync at GX2 Draw Done on OpenGL while performance can be 10 to 15 frames per second higher. It also makes the game a much, much buggier experience, and since this setting cannot be disabled when using Vulkan, I have enabled it for all of the benchmarks shown in this video. It's pretty damn impressive to see how far CMU's Vulkan implementation has come in the last few months, especially so when you consider that performance on this graphics API is much, much better the higher you increase the resolution of your games. This difference in performance from OGL to Vulkan only gets sweeter when you consider the fact that on Vulkan we also have asynchronous shader compilation, meaning that for even new users of this emulator, you're not going to have to put up with horrible stutters in gameplay, instead trading this in for a small amount of geometry, foliage and area pop-in. Some pretty cool stuff coming from the CMU team in 120.0. As I said, this is going to be released to everyone in the public on this coming Friday, the 17th of July. And as usual, if you guys request it, I will do a brand new and complete setup guide for this emulator. It may be a little bit confusing on older guides, especially so with GPU buffer cache accuracy now removed. So as usual, if you guys want me to, I will make a brand new guide absolutely no problem at all. In the coming days, well, maybe not days, but in the next few weeks, I also want to make a brand new video where I'm going to take a look at the differences between OpenGL and Vulkan. This video is going to mainly concentrate on CPUs with lower core counts. Many of you out there are already aware that NVIDIA's threaded optimization greatly improves CMU OpenGL performance by allocating an extra CPU core or thread to OpenGL workload. In that video, I want to test both for you guys and for myself whether CMU will perform much better on CPUs with lower core amounts when using Vulkan versus NVIDIA with OpenGL threaded optimization. 
Keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that one, it should be pretty damn interesting to see the results. As always, if there are any games that you would like me to test and let you know how they run, don't be afraid to let me know down below this video in a comment or as usual over on my Discord server. And again, as per usual, for any of my Patreon supporters, if you want me to test out any specific games, do not be afraid to contact me over on Patreon or in the Patreon exclusive channel over on my Discord server. A massive thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Without your help over the past few months, many of my videos would not have been possible at all. So again, if anyone wants to help with the running and maintenance of my channel, you'll find a link to my Patreon down in this video's description also. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.